Mr. October, Reggie Jackson, a playoff legend. Imagine a player who won back-to-back -back World Series twice. A player who has won three American League pennants in a row. Now, you might wonder if this is a tale from some fictional movie, but no, it isn't, because Reggie Jackson actually did it. As a result, they didn't just call this legendary player Reggie, they called him Mr. October. Reggie Jackson was born in the gritty streets of Wincote on the outskirts of Philly. His father, Martinez Jackson, half Puerto Rican and former Negro League Baseball second baseman, stitched suits daily and played ball by night. Well, his parents split when he was just six, and his mom took off with most of the brood, leaving Reggie with his dad as one of the few black families in town. At Cheltenham High School, Reggie was more than just a student. He was a sports hurricane tearing up the fields and courts. From football to basketball, baseball, and track, you name it, he excelled at all of them. This promising boy was a force of nature in baseball, batting a mind-boggling 550 and throwing no-hitters while still in school. Soon enough, the big guns came calling. Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma were willing to bend the rules just for Reggie. However, he declined both Alabama and Georgia, fearing the South's racial climate, and also said no to Oklahoma, where they told him to stop dating white girls. His dad wanted college, but Reggie wanted both football and baseball. As fate would have it, Arizona State University in Tempe offered him a football scholarship. But after a brief flirtation with the football team, Reggie swung for the baseball fences, and it was Bobby Winkles, the then ASU baseball coach, who gave him a shot. In 1966, the rising star made a spectacular debut as a center fielder, broke records, and was named an All-American. Of course, the scouts couldn't look away, and the Yankees' Tom Greenway and the Pirates' Danny Murtaugh were among those who saw something extraordinary in Reggie's swing. On June 7, 1966, the Kansas City Athletics drafted the young star, making him the second overall pick after Steve Chilcott. And that's when Reggie Jackson, age 20, began his journey in professional baseball. In the summer of 1967, Reggie Jackson burst onto the major league scene in a doubleheader showdown in Kansas City. A shutout sweep of the Cleveland Indians with scores of 2-0 and 6-0 marked his debut. But Jackson wasn't here to merely observe, he was here to conquer. In that first game, he smashed a triple and announced his arrival to the big leagues with an emphatic flourish. The Athletics, ever the Nomads, packed their bags and headed west to Oakland in 1968, and it didn't take long for Reggie to become the talk of the town. In 1969, he unleashed a home run barrage, racking up 47 in a single season. For a moment, he outpaced the legendary Roger Maris, who held the single season home run record with 61 in 1961. May 1970 saw a slumping Reggie facing threats from the team owner, Charlie O'Finley, who threatened to send Reggie down to the minors. Well, rather than stand for such, Reggie packed his bags for Puerto Rico, determined to reignite the flames. And he did just that, leading the league in homers and RBIs. Thankfully, the summer of 1971 was a turning point. That year, the A's clinched the American League West, a title they hadn't held in 40 years. The dream of a championship flickered like a neon sign on a dark night. But the World Series saw Jackson sidelined due to a torn hamstring, and, of course, this left fans and teammates alike wondering what might have been if he played. Despite his absence, though, the A's triumphed over the Cincinnati Reds, marking a rare moment of glory for the San Francisco Bay Area. In 1972, Reggie grew a mustache, which caused problems for him. Teammates wanted him to shave it off, but Reggie stood his ground. And luckily, owner Charlie O'Finley liked it so much that he dangled cash to incentivize others to grow one. Thus, Mustache Day became a moment in baseball, and everyone wanted one. That's why you see pictures of many baseball players from that era with mustaches. The A's were on a roll, and Reggie was at the forefront of their charge. 1973 was the year he cemented his legacy, being named the most valuable player of the American League. It was also the year the A's faced off against the New York Mets in the World Series. This time, they had a fearsome Reggie, and in Game 7, he hit a two-run homer alongside Burt Campanaris, propelling the A's to victory. In the end, he was awarded the World Series MVP, and his name echoed in baseball's hallowed halls. 1974 was another championship year for Reggie and the A's, as they triumphed over the Los Angeles Dodgers in a five-game showdown. And then came the Yankees, a team that needed a spark, a hero, someone to stir the drink. Luckily, they got Reggie in 1977. Of course, the team's owner, George Steinbrenner, was thrilled by this acquisition, but their field manager, Billy Martin, not so much. 
You see, Reggie had a history with Martin, who managed the Tigers when Reggie's A's sent them packing in the playoffs in 1972. So the Bronx Bombers welcomed Reggie, but not everyone was on board. In a fateful interview during spring training, Reggie's words about being the straw that stirs the drink found their way into print. These words set the clubhouse on fire, whether he meant to stir the pot or not. Relationships soured, tensions rose, and a clash he had with Martin in Boston became the stuff of legends. The battle unfolded in the dugout on national TV, with Reggie being in the middle of it all and amid the cheers of Red Sox fans. Well, George Steinbrenner would step in, giving Martin an ultimatum, let Reggie bat clean up or find a new job. Thankfully, Martin chose the former, and Reggie's hitting improved, sparking a winning streak. The Yankees would go on to clinch the division and the pennant, but the relationship between Reggie and Martin remained forever fractured. No doubt, Reggie Jackson's career was marked by extraordinary highs, but the pinnacle of his accomplishments came during the 1977 World Series when he earned his iconic nickname, Mr. October. In that series against the Los Angeles Dodgers, Thurman Munson, who was the Yankees' captain, recognized Jackson's penchant for clutch performances and famously quipped during an interview, Go ask Mr. October. This catchy nickname instantly clicked and became synonymous with Reggie Jackson's ability to shine in the biggest moments. Truly, the 1977 World Series showcased Jackson's greatness. He made history by hitting three home runs in the decisive Game 6, each on the very first pitch from three different Dodgers pitchers. The first home run, which was a line drive, found its home in the lower right field seats. The second was another laser-like line drive into the same vicinity. Then, the third, the most remarkable of them all, was an astonishing 475-foot towering shot into the center field's batter's eye seats. The moment left the fans chanting, Reggie, 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 and it etched itself in World Series lore. No doubt, scouting reports provided by Gene Michael and Bertie Tebbets proved invaluable in Jackson's success during that game. Their insight suggested that the Dodgers would pitch inside, and Reggie was ready. Notably, this fantastic player had hit a home run off Don Sutton in his last at-bat in Game 5, so his three consecutive home runs in Game 6 meant he had hit four home runs on four consecutive swings against as many Dodgers pitchers. Indeed, this historic performance secured Reggie's second World Series MVP award and made him the first player to win the award for two different teams. In 27 World Series games, he amassed 10 home runs, including a record 5 in the 1977 series, 24 RBIs, and a batting average of 357. His 25 total bases also broke Babe Ruth's record of 22, and this record still stands till today. Plus, Reggie Jackson's incredible feat has only been matched by players like Babe Ruth, Albert Pujols, and Pablo Sandoval, who hit three home runs in a single World Series game. By the way, the fans were so fired up during that Game 6 that they grew increasingly rowdy. In anticipation of the game's conclusion, some even threw firecrackers near Reggie's area in right field. Concerned for his safety, the star temporarily left the field to retrieve a helmet from the Yankees' bench. And as the final out was recorded, the fans began to flood the field, and he sprinted at full tilt, even body-checking past some eager fans on his way out. That's just how popular Reggie was. Following this monumental performance, the term Mr. October was cemented as part of baseball legend and Reggie Jackson's legacy. Despite his legendary status, Reggie Jackson's career had its fair share of controversies. In the turbulent times of the late 70s, the Yankees became known as the Bronx Zoo, and this was partly because differences with teammates, managers, and owners often played out in public. In 1980, the legendary player achieved a career milestone, batting 300 and leading the American League with 41 home runs, which earned him the Silver Slugger Award. Yet, the Yankees were swept by the Kansas City Royals in the ALCS. Reggie Jackson entered the last year of his contract in 1981 and endured further difficulties with owner George Steinbrenner. But then, despite these challenges, the Yankees managed to claw their way back from a 14-game deficit and eventually won the pennant in a one-game playoff. The 1981 World Series against the Dodgers proved to be a mixed bag for Reggie. He injured himself running the bases in Game 2 and missed two games, but he returned to hit a home run in Game 4. Unfortunately, though, the Yankees lost the final three games, and the Dodgers claimed the championship. In 1982, this baseball virtuoso became a free agent once more and signed with the California Angels. In his first game back at Yankee Stadium with the Angels, he broke out of a season starting slump by hitting a home run and, once again, he drew chants of Reggie from the Yankee faithful, who were still upset over his departure. Well, in 1987, Reggie returned to the Oakland Athletics and retired at the age of 41. 
It was truly an eventful ride while it lasted, and we can safely say it was totally worth it.